Ciao a tutti, buongiorno, buonasera, come state? Allora, benvenuti a questa nuova lezione di italiano con mano di Italy Made Easy. Allora, la verità, tell you the truth, I'm really tired. I've been dealing with technology all night. It's now 7.30 in the morning here and it's still not working too well. Anyway, let me know if you can hear me because then we'll start straight with the content today if you can hear me. There's the usual delay, but I think it should now be only 15 seconds, so that's not too bad. Perfect. All right, so what's happening today? I had to change the plan because in case you missed yesterday's tragic stream, we played a game that was really a lot of fun, it was very interactive, I mean, when it worked, but I was going to do the same today for the intermediate level and I was going to deliver the class and have you play and you know, practice Italian at intermediate, intermediate level, but I didn't have time to prepare much because I was up all night. So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach a lesson that is still on the same topic of the passato prossimo. What I'm going to do is many of you have doubts about when to use essere and when to use avere as the auxiliary verb of a passato prossimo. So I had a look at other videos on YouTube where this is explained and I can see the comments, you're just very, very confused. And the truth is, the reason is that it's been explained to you in Italian. You know my approach. Unless you are an advanced student who understands Italian really well, then in which case I, I wonder why are you watching uh, grammar videos anyway, because you should be alright. But my point is, you should learn the grammar of a foreign language in your language because it's a lot easier to get the idea. So I'm going to explain this very difficult topic of when to say essere and when to use avere. I'll explain this to you in English so you get it once and for all. It doesn't mean you'll always get it right afterwards, but you will finally have clarity on when this happens because no other video on YouTube really explains it in a clear way in English they explain it to you in Italian and that's why you're missing the point, I think. So, sip of water. I won't be changing screens, I'll be on camera the whole time. So what I ask you to do is I would like you to be my scribes. Because every time I change to a different scene and slides, we lose sound. I don't, I don't want any more trouble today, honestly, I'm so tired. It's gonna work today. So. If you would be my scribes, what I would ask you to do is whenever I, I use Italian, you know, giving you examples, uh, talking about a verb or, you know, this verb means that, could you please type it? That way, that way people who, I'm not sure about the spelling of something, they can read it in the chat. If it's right in the chat, then I'll say you guys are right. If you misspelled it, then I'll fix it. But that way everybody can have a visual of what I'm talking about. So thank you very much to whoever volunteers to help. Could be many of you, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's start. I have some notes, but I can't share them with you. Essere and avere. So of course we, you know the passato prossimo. It's one of two main ways for Italians to talk about the past. And it's the passato prossimo is the common verb tense that we use to talk about events that started and ended in the past. For example, I bought a house, I had breakfast. It doesn't matter when it was, it could be two years ago or five minutes ago. If it's over, it's over. So we use the passato prossimo, you're good with that. But some verbs, so the passato prossimo it has two components, it has an auxiliary verb and a past participle. So it sounds like the English, I have bought. Where I have is the auxiliary in English and bought is the past participle of to buy. In Italian we would say ho comprato, 
or meaning I have and comprato mean, meaning bought. So it's fairly similar to a tense that you have in English. We use it in a different way, but go with the similarity, don't go with the differences. But there are times when we don't say io o in the past participle, but we say io sono. For example, we say io sono andato for I have gone or I went. Where in English we would say I have gone, in Italian we are saying I am gone. Sono andato. So, this is confusing because first it doesn't exist in English to do it this way, and secondly, you don't really know which verbs use S and which ones not. So, the traditional way of the passato prossimo being taught is by telling you that verbs of movement and change of state use essere as the auxiliary. It's not true, it doesn't work many, many, many of the times. For example, ballare, that's a verb of movement, you're moving. Viaggiare, you're moving in English. And salire, which means to climb. But again, they don't use essere, or salire can, but... So you might think verbs of movement, but then you think of a verb of movement like passeggiare, to walk, or camminare, like to walk, and you expect them to use essere, so you might want to say io sono camminato for I walked, but you will be incorrect because it's ho camminato, ho passeggiato. So even though it's a verb of movement, it doesn't work. So don't go with that idea. So yeah, don't use it. We are going to cover three or four main points. The first one that I want to tell you is there are some like big 12 verbs. I think you have to know that at least these 12 verbs, you have to use essere. So don't think too much about it. These are 12 big verbs. You're going to use them so much that you have to get used to saying sono andato or sono andata for, for a woman. Sono partito, sono partita. Siete partiti, have you guys left? Si, siamo partiti alle cinque. Yes, we left at five. So, I'm going to tell you the verbs that are guaranteed to use essere, get used to them, so that you don't have to think about these ones. So it's andare and venire, obviously. Partire, you can type these ones if, if it helps. So andare to go, venire to come. Partire, to leave or to depart, and arrivare, to arrive or, or to get to a place. Stare. Stare means to stay, sometimes it means to be. And the related verb restare, which means to remain. Tornare, to return, or ritornare, also to return. Now, another pair that always uses essere as auxiliary verb is nascere and morire. Nascere, to be born, and morire, to die. So these ones, you'd be surprised, we use them a lot. You know, somebody died, somebody was born. So you know, it's actually quite common to use nascere and morire. Yeah, thank you for typing. The spelling is all good, so you can trust my scribes. See? Perfetto. Another big verb that will use essere all the time, it's diventare. Diventare means to become. Uh, Zach, it's nascere just like grated corn typed it, okay? Um, what do you say? Diventare to become. Quindi, Marco è diventato famoso. Marco became famous. So diventare also uses essere. So these ones, want to get used to them. Piacere is another big one. The verb to like, piacere, you have to use essere. It's mi è piaciuto, ti è piaciuto. She è piaciuto, which would become c'è piaciuto, c'è piaciuto, we liked it. So piacere, always essere, and finally rimanere, rimanere, which means to remain, so it's a synonym of restare, really. So these 12 verbs, don't think too much about them. So let's move on to when, how, how to know when to use essere and avere. I'm going to introduce to many of you, the concept of transitive and intransitive verbs. 
Some of you may know what this means, some of you may not. Okay. A transitive verb is pretty much a normal verb like you would expect, meaning it's a verb where the action transfers from the subject to an object. For example, when in English you say, I'm reading a book, the action of reading is being transferred from me doing it to the book being read, right? So when you think about it, most verbs work like this because you do stuff to stuff. You know, like I sing a song, I watch a movie, I buy a house, uh, I don't know, you know, I make pizza, I eat lunch, like whatever you do, there's usually an object. But in Italian, you have to be careful because the concept exists in English as well. But in Italian, it's more extreme, meaning it's not the sentence that tells you whether the verb is transitive or not, it's the actual quality of the verb. So you don't have to have the object in your sentence for that verb to be transitive. Hold on, I'll tell you why I'm teaching you this because it's gonna make everything very simple for you. So it might sound like a difficult concept, probably it is, but. So let me just check that everything is healthy in my stream. Good, awesome. Just a nice sip of water. I hope you can hear the vacuum clean, the, the cleaning guys are, are cleaning the office outside. So, transitive, it doesn't have to be to have the object in the sentence. So for example, the idea of eating is that you eat something, otherwise you're not eating, right? So I can just say manjo, and that manjo in the present tense I eat is transitive because I, I must be eating something. So in the passato prossimo, all transitive verbs will use avere as the auxiliary verb, always. The verb is transitive, it has to use avere. Ho mangiato. So I can just say ho mangiato and full stop. I don't have to say what I ate, but the idea of mangiare implies that I ate something. So, that's the first concept that I would like to kind of get grasp. So, for example, I read, as in reading, I don't have to say that I read a book, because to read implies that I read something. Quindi ho letto. Ho comprato, abbiamo visto, we saw, abbiamo portato, we took. Why? Because taking, you must take something, right? Otherwise, you're not taking something, okay? So these verbs, transitive verbs, they're easy to recognize because when you look at the verb, you, you can ask the question, who or what? And if you can have an answer, then probably you have a transitive verb. For example, I ate, what? Pizza. I read, what? A book. I watched, what? A movie. So that what or who, you know, if, you, if your object is a person, then you know that it's transitive. You must use avere as the auxiliary verb. And the beauty of when you use avere is that the second part, the past participle, does not have to change. So, io ho mangiato, lei ha mangiato, Voi avete mangiato. We don't have to worry about changing mangiato. Unless there's a pronoun before, but we don't worry about that today. Let's look at intransitive verbs. An intransitive verb is a verb that whose meaning does not want an object. No, we're not saying it. It doesn't want it. It doesn't make sense with an object. That's because the verb is performed onto the subject. So when you, when you go to the ones that we said before, that as I just said, memorize these ones, why are they intransitive? Well, because when I go, I can go to a place, but it's about me going, right? I go to Rome, I don't go Rome. Okay, that would make it an object, but it's not. You know, when somebody dies, it's about the thing dying. You see it? Here's another verb that I didn't mention in the top 12, but for example, um, what was it? Oh, I just forgot. Actually, I won't say it because it, it can confuse you. I'll say it in a bit. Think about, um, I don't know, partire. It's about me leaving. Yes, I'm leaving a city, but who's, who's doing the leaving? Me. There is no object in leaving. It's about me. I'm leaving myself, okay? so. 
think it of this in this term. So when a verb is intransitive, you always use essere. Always. So first of all, you can use a dictionary. Whenever you look up a verb in a dictionary, it will tell you whether the verb is transitive or intransitive. Each dictionary has a different way of telling you, but it could say, um, in Italian it would say VT for verbo transitivo and VE for verbo intransitivo as in VI. Okay. Uh, in English it might be the opposite, you know, like TV, transitive verb, and IV for intransitive verb. So find out what your dictionary uses to tell you whether the verb is transitive or intransitive, and you have the answer already to which auxiliary you should use. But you don't always have a dictionary because you're speaking, you can't go and look it up. You have to use your logics. So you have to think of whether the verb is intransitive or not. So let's do a little test. I'm going to ask you whether the verb, I'm going to say the verb in English and in Italian, and you tell me whether it's transitive or intransitive, okay? So, comprare, to buy, is it transitive or intransitive? Comprare, to buy. Transitive. Comprare is transitive. Awesome. Uh, baciare. To kiss. Baciare. Transitive or intransitive? Baciare is transitive because you gotta kiss something or somebody. Otherwise, you're not kissing. How about uh, to paint? Dipingere o pitturare? Dipingere if it's a paint, if it's like a picture, like an artistic, and pitturare if it's the wall, but what's, what's to paint? Transitive or intransitive? Transitive because you gotta paint something, right? You always paint something. How about to fall? Cadere. Cadere. You have to understand the concept. That's why I'm not even giving you sentences, because unless the concept is clear, you're not going to get it right. How about to fall? Cadere. What do you think this is? Is it transitive or intransitive? I've got a few intransitives. Yep, esatto, ragazzi. It's intransitive. Why? Because when something falls, the thing is doing it itself. So if, well, if I'm walking and I trip over, I fell, it's, I, I fell. So in Italian, I would say sono caduto, sono caduto. Whereas in English you say, I have fallen. In Italian we say, I am fallen, sono caduto. Maria è caduta, Mary has fallen. So it's intransitive. I, I, I was going to use the pen to show you the difference between to fall and to drop. Cadere is intransitive, right? So right now the pen fell. I did nothing, right? So the pen just fell by itself. In that case, we'd say la penna è caduta. In English, the pen fell. But if I do this, then I drop the pen. So it's about Manu dropping the pen. So in that case, it's to, uh, to drop is not intransitive. It's actually transitive. In Italian, to drop is far cadere, so it's transitive in that sense. So, ho fatto cadere la penna. Ho fatto, io ho fatto cadere la penna. I have made the pen fall, pretty much. So, you see the concept? How about to run? How about to run? That's a tricky one. In English and in Italian. Grazie ragazzi, you playing the scribes. So cadere, eh, sorry, what did I say? To run. Correre. Correre. Correre is both intransitive and transitive. It depends how you use it. In English, if it's, if it's about, oh look, Michael is running. 
then it's about Michael running his own body, yeah? <laughs> so in that case, it's intransitive. But if Michael is running a marathon, then he's running an object. So he's running the object. So in that case, it's transitive. In English, then you can use to run to meaning to manage. So like I run a business. In that case, because it means to manage, it is transitive. In Italian, it's the same. So if it's about me running, like if I want to say that um, I ran to see my sister, I would say sono corso per vedere mia sorella, or sono corso a vedere mia sorella. But if I ran in like, another context, I could say if I, if, if I ran 500 meters, ho corso 500 metri. I'm not going to say sono corso 500 metri. Because 500 metri is a clear object of the verb. And if the verb has an object, it's transitive. So I know it's tricky, but that's so important. You will see that everything changes after today for you. Now, there are some tricky verbs because you think they're one thing and they're the other. And there's no real logical explanation. So I'm going to tell you the, the horrible ones that will confuse you. You might think that dormire, to sleep, is intransitive because it's about me sleeping. In Italian, we actually sleep a sleep, like I slept a good sleep. So dormire is transitive, so ho dormito. Io ho dormito. No, sono dormito. To swim is another thing that in English you might say, well, it's about me swimming. But in Italian, we swim laps. You swim a distance. You swim a swim. So. Even to swim uses avere, o nuotato. But that you might think you could use the other one, but you don't. Camminare, I mentioned it before, because you think, well, it's about me moving. I'm moving my body. It actually uses avere in Italian, so ho camminato. Maybe because we're thinking I've walked a certain distance. I don't know. I don't really know myself why camminare uses avere, but that's how it is. So these ones will trick you a little bit. Now, other v then, there are, then you get to the verbs, and I, I'm going to start qu asking questions very soon. Then you get to the verbs that have both possibilities. It depends on how you use them. For example, the verb cominciare, could you please type cominciare, which means to start. Cominciare a, you start doing something. Right? Cominciare a, it depends on what I'm saying. If the subject is human or animate, like a dog or a plant or a person, Chances are that the person started something. So whenever the subject is animate or human, let's say, but it could be a plant as well, we're going to use avere as auxiliary because if I say I started watching a movie, I, there's me starting something. So ho cominciato a guardare un film. Ho cominciato because I started it. Il cane ha cominciato ad abbaiare, the dog started barking, because the dog started something. So, avere is the auxiliary for cominciare. Same for finire, okay? What I'm saying about cominciare is the same about finire. But what if the movie started? Hey, come here, the movie started. Then il film è cominciato, because it started itself. It's about the movie starting. There is no object in the movie starting. So. Same for finire. La festa è finita. The party is over or the party has ended. That's because the party ended itself. So be careful with these ones. Two more things. The verb piacere, like I mentioned before, always, always uses essere as the auxiliary, so don't let it confuse you. Confuse it's always ti è piaciuto il film. Ti è piaciuta la cena? Did you like the movie? Did you like dinner? So always essere with piacere. And then finally, all the reflexive verbs in Italian use essere as the auxiliary. Why is that? Well, a reflexive verb by definition is a verb that the subject does to him or herself or itself. So all the reflexive verbs will use essere. Mi sono svegliato. I woke up. A che ora ti sei svegliata? At what time did you, woman, wake up? A che ora ti sei svegliata? 
Ci siamo arrabbiati. We got angry. I'm using essere as auxiliary because it's a reflexive verb, therefore it's about the subject. Okay, so confusing, but I hope you have some clarity now and it's not just like a guessing game. Think about the quality of the verb, you should be able. There's a little trick that I can teach you if you allow me to speak bad English. Let me know if I'm allowed to break English and I'll tell you a little trick. While I drink, I'll wait for your response. Permission granted? Can I break English? Yeah, let's break it. Also, by the way, guys, I know that as a learner of a language Italian, you want to always be right. But sometimes when your level is good, it's so totally fun to break the rules because people will understand that you're being witty. So yeah, be witty in Italian. Make up words. Don't feel this pressure that if I say it wrong, they'll think that I don't know. If it's witty, do it. I'll give you permission to, to be witty in Italian, linguistically speaking. All right, so here's the trick. Hey, we speak bad English in America anyway. I think everybody speaks bad, bad English. All right, so here's the trick. You can check whether a verb is intransitive by translating what you're thinking back into English. And if it still makes sense by using, with using essere as, uh, to be as the auxiliary in English, and it still makes sense, it doesn't change the meaning, then you can confirm that it's intransitive. Here's what I mean. So in Italian, we say, sono andato. Now in English, it's I have gone. But let's be playful and let's replace I have gone with the verb to be in English, like we do in Italian. Can I say I am gone? I'm gone. Does it have the same meaning as I've left? Yes, it does. Now this one can actually work in English because, you know, you can say I'm gone. You can say that. But let's pick another one. Uh, another verb. Let's take arrive. Arrivare. In Italian we say sono arrivato, but in English we say I have arrived. Let's change I have arrived to I am arrived. It's wrong, okay? But if somebody said, like if a foreigner said to you I'm arrived, I am arrived, you probably understand what they mean because they haven't changed the meaning. So if it still works by changing the auxiliary in English, you actually have confirmed that the verb is intransitive in Italian. I'll show you when it doesn't work because you might say, oh, but then it's going to work every time. It doesn't. If the verb is transitive, you can't do it because you change the meaning. Let's say, ho guardato, I have watched, and we change it with I am watched. It's different meaning. It's grammatically correct, but the difference between I have watched is that I do, I'm doing the watching and I am watched, it's I'm being watched. So you change the direction, you're making the verb passive. So if in English you cannot replace the auxiliary have with be, because if you do, you make it passive, then you have a, a transitive verb in English and in Italian therefore. Okay, I don't know if this trick is useful, but it's helped a lot, a lot of my students at the university, so I thought I'd tell you. So let's wrap it up, let's wrap this lesson up because it's, it's already eight o'clock, it's, it's already like half an hour. And let's hear, let's ask you some questions. How would you say, actually no, you guys type an example of reflexive verb in a sentence. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll see if you use it right. I, I, I heard a Mario coin as well. I don't know, it's coming from my computer. I don't know what it is. I'm not playing Mario, I promise. Uh, while we're getting those sentences, David Forbes has a really interesting question. Sono voluto arrivare and ho voluto arrivare. This is due to the fact that you're using a modal verb, volere, 
in the passato prossimo. So this is confusing, but in Italian the best advice is when you have a sentence like that, you would use the auxiliary that you would use for the main verb. So in that case, you would use the auxiliary that you use for arrivare. So sono voluto arrivare sounds good. I have wanted, I've wanted to arrive. But if you wanted to say I've wanted to eat, then you would say ho voluto mangiare because you uses avere. So. Okay, I'm back. All right, so let me go back to why that sentence wasn't right. Mi ha piaciuto molto questa lezione. Because piacere always uses essere, so we don't think about it. So mi è piaciuta molto questa lezione. Mi sono svegliata presto, I woke up early. Mi sono svegliato, I woke up. Mi sono svegliato alle 6. I woke up at 6. Mi sono svegliato. You all picked the same verb, wow. Ti è piaciuto? Did you like it? Anya, esatto. Ti sei lavato le mani? Nice one. You washed your own hands. You washed your hands, so that's reflexive. And ci siamo piaciuto? Mm, that's a tricky one because piacere uses estero, so you did it right. But because it's plural, you should say ci siamo piaciuti. But that would, would mean that we liked each other. You have to revise piacere because it is tricky. Ok, perfetto, mi lavi i denti, sì, benissimo ragazzi, we made it to the end of today's lesson, let me know in the comments whether this was useful, whether it actually helped you understand the difference between essere and avere a bit more, like the video once it becomes a video, I think you can like it now as well, But anyway, grazie mille ragazzi, ci vediamo! Domani per un'altra lezione e domani facciamo un comprehension exercise, so it will be in Italian. I'll speak Italian to you, I'll tell you a little story and then I'll ask you a bunch of questions about the story that I just told you. It was a lot of fun last week when we did it, so look forward to doing it again. Ok, grazie mille, ciao ciao!